Today I have a special guest for you guys. His name is Al Ye, and he's really into spirituality, channeling, and he has a lot of special gifts. The reason I wanted to bring him to you guys is because I've had a session with him, and it was extremely beneficial for me. And I said, if it's extremely beneficial to me, I know it will be to you guys. So I wanted to bring it to you. So with that being said, please tell us a little bit about what you would consider yourself or if you even have a title for yourself. So my professional title is multi-dimensional healing artist. Mm. Hey, uh, so when I decided to go on my healing journey, I was like, okay, I'm a healer. So I have to affirm it, you know? And as I began to and continue to heal myself, then my artistic gifts just started to flourish even more. And I've always been like an artist, you know, as a kid, and, uh, uh, drawing, you know, all this other stuff. But I've learned that, you know, as you heal yourself more, you become much more of a reflection of the creator, mm. you know? And I just wanted to create more, okay? So I was a healing artist at that time. And then I started like channeling, I started to, to become much more grounded in this reality, which allowed me to explore that which is beyond this reality. Mm. And, and that which is beyond this reality is dimensions. So I became multidimensional. In which we all are multidimensional, we just have to become conscious of that. Mm. So when you, when you say uh, you healed yourself and you got rid of a lot of the baggage that you had and you opened up and then you was able to channel, is this channeling something that anybody can do, or, or do you even have a special gift with it? I feel like every single, I know every single person can channel, okay? Anything that someone else can do, you can do, okay? And that's the truth, because it's in our DNA. And once one human does it, then we're all connected, so it becomes easier for someone else, okay? How like, the, like the 100 monkey syndrome. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, thank you for being aware of that. <laughs> I was trying to explain it to someone else, and it just was not connected. Like what? I need to see this one, you know. <laughs> but it, it's, it's true, you know. And just in case you guys don't know, the 100 monkey syndrome is basically once one monkey, for example, they had a study, the one monkey went to the ocean and learned how to wash a fruit. And then about 100 of them learned it. And then by the time 100 learned it, it's like every monkey knew how to wash the particular fruit in the ocean without seeing that particular monkey. So that means it's in the energy field and it permeates there, so then therefore everybody has access to it. It almost tilts the scale, so to speak. Mm. I'm with that. I just feel like if we all were channeling or if we all were connected to the Creator consciously, and just imagine what this world would be like. You know, we would we'd all be eating fruit and veggies. <laughs> <laughs> we'd all be floating by now. <laughs> we'd all be like, you know. So, so with the channeling though, yeah. So, a lot of people had concerns with channeling, yes. and the concerns were negative forces. Mm -hmm. And besides the negative forces and feeling like they could tap into something that can harm them, mm -hmm. and I guess the question would be, how do you distinguish and how do you make sure that you're actually channeling, if you're lucky enough, right? Because a lot of us have a lot, so much going on that we don't get the chance to really center ourselves on that level to be able to channel. So if we are lucky enough for that, how do you distinguish? There's a couple ways. One way to know within the self is the feeling you get in your body, okay? Because your body's gonna tell you what's going on with you, with the soul, with the mind, with the heart, with, with the aura, okay? When, it's like when you're talking to someone that you really love, you get butterflies in you. Or you get this warm feeling in your heart and it's just expanding and you feel so good, okay? Then um, that's that good confirmation, okay? Or when you're really, really inspired about an artistic project that you know is just gonna help somebody or you know it's just gonna serve, you know, the highest good or you know, you're trying to do good in the world and you get that good feeling. And that's how you know you're, you're channeling something good, that you're channeling something beyond you. You're allowing the creator, the universe to work through you. So it's very important to know that, you know, if things feel bad, if you feel afraid, if you feel fear, to, you know, if you feel any of these emotions that are not beneficial to you, 
then you should command your reality with your voice. Mm. Speak things into existence. Ask the questions, ask the hard questions, ask the universe, ask the creator, go directly to the source of all creation, asking, what is going on? What do I need to know in this situation? What am I doing wrong? What am I supposed to do? Always asking questions pertaining to you and not casting blame on others to say, okay, what can I do? What do I need to do? Okay, what would I, you know, and speaking from the eye. Speaking from the eye. Is this good for me? Is what I'm channeling good? If this does not serve my highest good creator, then please remove it from my reality. Mm. Like I see and I I noticed like there are like some tough guys that, you know, just like, you know, they're tough in reality, but when it comes to like closing their eyes and they're afraid of the darkness that they see, you know, we have to be willing to be just as tough on the other side as we are here in this reality, you know? And the toughness comes with being firm but also loving. Okay? It's like um it's like the tough love of a father. You know, you know the father loves you, you know the father wants you to do your best and all this other stuff, but it just may not be that perhaps nurturing, you know, or, or in that aspect, but sometimes you don't need to be nurtured sometimes, sometimes you need to be told, you know, stand up kind of thing, or or sometimes uh, a straighten up your vertebrae, your vertebrae. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes an entity needs to be told, go away, you know what I'm saying, and you have to say it with complete conviction that that entity will go away. And that could be a little bit challenging for somebody who's new to that world and, you know, first of all, you're talking about an entity, right? That's just a whole other level for some people who may not have been around other people to speak in, in that manner and mm -hmm. advising them on what to do with entities because that's a whole different ballgame, right? Mm -hmm. So, if they, is there any protection? that they can visualize besides the spoken word? Is there like, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, white light um, meditations or surrounding yourself with white golden light to protect you. Is there anything like that that you do? I do. Um, so yes, one is like tube of white light. Yeah, so we, we use a tube of white light and allow this tube of white light to connect from the source of all creation to the core of Mother Earth through your crown chakra and through your root chakra and into your heart space, expanding through your aura and begin to breathe through that tube of light, okay? Allowing only that which is divine and good to exist within it. Another thing is the violet flame, like a violet flame, like a purple flame. Whatever is in your reality, and this works even in like physical reality, like whatever's going on, just like send a violet flame to ramp around that situation. Mm. Like if you feel upset or if you are going through something, visualize a violet flame just surrounding you and within and permeating through and just all around and inside of your body and you just being surrounded and engulfed within that body flame okay and what does that do is that like some kind of burning away of the negativity or the the, the pessimistic thoughts what is that doing so what it does is it, it transmutes the situation to the highest vibration of this reality because for purple is the highest color that we can actually see on the ultraviolet spectrum so when you're using that with the element of fire, fire is transmutation, fire is transformation. You're transforming and transmuting the situation into the highest vibration of what it is. Oh, that can be useful. Yeah, <laughs> that's what, yeah, it's, it's, that can be useful. Oh, it's very powerful. With the visualization and I guess the feeling to go along with it too, right? I guess the feeling and the intention. And then the thing about the vital flame is it cannot be used uh, with the wrong intention. Mm. Because we know what, what the beautiful thing about it is it's, we're not wielding it, we're calling on it mm. for it to come forth in our reality to transmute what we are going through. That's pretty interesting. We're not wielding it, we're using it to transform. We're allowing it. <laughs> <laughs> so with those things, we should have a, a center, a peacefulness, and minimize any kind of fears that we might have. And if there is some negative entities, like you said, I guess it could be, be used as a word of negative spirits, because I know people hear that, I'm more familiar with that particular phrase. Mm -hmm. So we have this, and if there is, by any chance, a negative spirit, we use this particular technique and get rid of it. 100%. 100%. 100%. Vital flame works. It's great. Yeah. Two white light works. Works. 
<laughs> and if that stuff does not work, then prayer always works. Like literally just like all the, the energy that you're wanting to kind of like, if you like in those moments where you feel so lost and you just may want to just like run to a friend or run to someone or just run to vent, pour all of that energy into the creator. Like just pour and just give that situation over. Creator God, source, whatever you call it. What is going on? Please help me. I just put the situation in your hands and literally surrender the situation over. Okay. Because when you say me. give it to the source, you, you, you're, you're emotionally, mentally, like almost releasing Perfect. that particular energy. Okay. Which is I what guess. venting is. Yeah, I feel good when I'm venting. <laughs> <laughs> but then you yeah. just like you just kind of put that on another person. Yeah. Are they ready to hold space? For no, that? most of the time, know, no. Yes, yeah. but the creator is mm. every single time, and infinitely more ready. Like they're like, okay, cool, you ready? Here's your blessing. So if that's the case, and we're talking about channeling, and we're talking about releasing, I know a lot of energy buildup is caught in us with the. Uh, the things that we regret, um, the arguments we have, things we may not even know that's in our subconscious mind from a kid that we, we went through these different situations that cause blocks, you know, relationship issues that maybe we was with someone and they hurt us and it, and it kind of lodges in us, right? So this probably is some of the aspects that would not allow us to be able to channel effectively, correct? And with this particular flame, mm -hmm. violet flame, mm -hmm. we'd be able to burn a lot of that negative discord. emotion and discord relatively easily to be able to connect and go more with the flow and creating the life that we want. To raise our vibration. Yes. So in these times, it's like it's, it's incredibly traumatic. Like this entire year was just a, a debacle, you know, and politically and culturally and uh, racially, so many different ways, you know, that self-care itself is imperative, okay? And, and self-care begins on the inside. So love itself is a way to make sure that our cups are full so that we know we are loving ourselves enough to take care of ourselves, to take care of our emotional stability, our emotional well-being, okay? Because having emotional stability does not mean suppressing it. Okay, it means expressing, it means feeling, truly embracing these emotions and experiencing them. Okay. Uh, so what if somebody's really angry? Because when you said that, yeah. all of a sudden I seen the Hulk yeah. by my mind, just raging. Mm -hmm. I mean, that could have somewhat of a backlash to a certain mm -hmm. extent, right? Mm -hmm. So what if somebody's feeling this anger and, and maybe resentment for all the things they went through in life, right? And they feel like they were smarter than somebody else, and why did that person make it? In? Why is that celebrity who's 20 years old and is a multi-millionaire mm -hmm. and I'm not and I have that, that rage is there and it's subtle, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it comes out and sometimes you press it. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you deal with that kind of stuff? So, because <laughs> that's real, right? Isn't that real? I know a lot of people like that. They always talk about what Justin Timberlake has or Justin Bieber. And, I'm, and I get it, but I also know better, all right? So what is your take on that? So what I do is I'll, I go inside, okay? Because and it's, it's also about embracing your triggers, right? So since this is triggering to me, then there, I must be seeing something that is with inside of me that's making me have this response. So I go inside and I start asking myself these hard questions, okay? And I bring my ancestors that serve the highest good in. Okay? Like into my meditations because they're in our hearts already, you know. Mm. And I start asking, I say, you know, what, what's wrong with me? What, what am I doing? Why am I feeling this way about this? And the understanding that we receive when we open ourselves up to find divine truth is very soothing. It can calm all of that anger. Mm. Okay? It's like when, it's very tough, like, it's like when people go to get like a reading and they're just like frantic about an entire situation and the reader is a reader, like they're good. And they tell you like the truth. They tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And it kind of it calms you down. You know, you're just like, oh, I, I, I knew that. You know, they knew it in their hearts, but they just kind of needed to see the reflection. But if you go inside in your own heart and ask those questions, then you find that understanding within yourself. 
Okay. And that allows the anger to like kind of break down. Mm. Okay. The violent flame works too. <laughs> as well as meditation, like you can literally breathe anger away, like you know, like breathe, take a deep breath, Woosa. like Woosa. it's a joke, but it works, like it's a joke, but it works, you know what I'm saying, like taking deep, slow breaths, becoming conscious of your breath, as opposed to the thoughts that are making you angry, shifting your focus, okay, because a lot of times what I've noticed is that people are wanting to create things when they're angry or they're wanting to do things, they're wanting to react when they're angry and all this other stuff and they're acting out of anger instead of, and, and the anger is, is a response of external stimuli instead of creating from the inside. So what, what, what if the, the anger is the inside? Mm -hmm. What if that person is angry? Like I said, maybe that person was molested as a kid. What no. if that person actually has tangible mm. discomfort and anger, mm -hmm. right? It, it needs to be released. Mm. Right. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. And that's when the internal work happens. Forgiveness. Compassion. But we must make the choice to choose love. Forgiveness is the path of love. Compassion is the path of love. Yeah, when you say love, <laughs> it sounds a little, uh, what's that word that people, fluffy. Yeah. So when you say love, I mean, you know, because you can love yourself to a certain extent, you can love other people, but if somebody crosses the line and slaps you in the face, there has to be some tangible realities of having a balance and protecting yourself, mm -hmm. right? I, I just had to think that because I've seen a lot of people that have the glossy eyes and they're all about love and floating around and in the world and saying hi to everybody, peace and love, and some of them are starving mm -hmm. and they're saying that everything's okay. Mm -hmm. So when I see that, when I hear people say love, mm -hmm. it makes me think mm -hmm. because everybody has a different definition of love, mm -hmm. right? So I guess that is even diving deeper into yourself on what is your definition of love. Mm -hmm. Love begins inside once again and so in those scenarios when there are people that are harming you we must love ourselves enough to protect ourselves love ourselves enough to defend ourselves if necessary but never to cross the line of search and destroy that's absolutely unnecessary loving ourselves enough to make sure that we are good before we try to give peace and love to anybody else. I need to have peace and love for me first. You need to be able to eat. <laughs> so, yeah, right? To to yeah. True. Okay. And that kind of answered that question and it actually clarified quite a bit on channeling and really getting into that space and protecting yourself and knowing how to rebuke negative energies, negative spirits, negative beings, whatever they may be called, and how to call on that positive light force, the universal God force, to receive the, the answers that we want. That we need. That we need. Yeah, yeah I, I agree completely. The answers that we get may not be what we want. It's what you need. When you ask those hard questions to the Creator, you're going to get what you need, not what you want. And sometimes, when we ask, we may not get the answer right away. So we have to be aware throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month, throughout the year, and pay attention to any signs that's being brought our way. And when you ask, when you pray to the Creator, when you go to the source, the source will come to you. And the answers will be communicated in such a way that they are so specific to you that you may not be able to explain them to anybody else because it was for you. You went to the source and the source came to you, you know? And so you cut out every single middleman. It's not, it's not necessary, you know? And when you do that, you make your divine connection much stronger. Mm. You solidify it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you got some fantastic information that help, actually will help you in your journey. That's made me uh, even that much more conscious. And I hope it helped you out quite a bit. We're gonna end it there. Peace.